Hello friends, hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to the 10th practice set of the SAT series. In this episode, we are going to specifically focus on probability. Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, our first question is, we have a table uh, given here and this table talks about uh, a total of 120 college students and the table gives a breakup of those 120 college students with respect to their gender and with respect to the subjects in which they are doing their majors, right? So for example, 24 male students are doing major in English, whereas 18 female students are doing major in English and so on and so forth, right? So this is the breakup of those 120 college students. And uh, let's say that we have to find the probability that a student is selected randomly from this group. And what is the probability that a student would be doing the major in history, right? So again, what is probability? Probability is nothing but number of favorable outcomes, right? Divided by the number of total outcomes, correct? So it's very important for us to understand what is the boundary from which we are talking about finding the probability. So in this case, the question says that a student is randomly selected from this overall group, right? So it means that uh, the number of total outcomes could be 120, right? Because we are selecting one student from this overall group, right? So our denominator becomes 120, correct? And we are trying to find the probability of the students who are doing major in history, right? It's not even talking about any gender or anything. It's just saying that, okay, how many students would be doing major in history? How many students are doing major in history? 20 male and 22 females. So overall, this set, 20 plus 22, which is 42. So 42 students are doing major in history. Hence, our number of favorable outcomes becomes 42. Right? So 42 over 120, of course, we can simplify this. But 42 over 120 is our probability of when we pick any student randomly from this overall group, that the probability of and that the student would be doing the major in history 42 over 120. Now question number two. So with the same set of information, now the situation is changed. And let's say that we are picking a male student at random. So it's given that we are picking a male student at random. And with that scenario, we have to find the probability that that male student would be doing a music major. Correct. So in the previous question, our boundary was the overall set of the students, which was 120. But this time, we know that we are picking a student from the male category, right? So our boundary is changed. Our boundary is only male, right? So the probability of uh, finding a student, a male student doing music major would be, again, same thing, number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. The total number of outcomes in this case would be total male because that's the given scenario, right? We know that our bucket is only the male students. So the total male students would be 24 plus 20 plus 19, right? 24 plus 20 plus 19, which is equal to 63, correct? So our denominator becomes 63. And we are interested in those male students who have the music major. So our number of favorable outcomes is this guy here, because these are the male students who are doing music major, so it is 19. So the probability of finding a male student doing a music major would be 19 over 63 in this case. Question number three. Again, with the same setting, the situation is now that a music major student is picked at random. So we know that our boundary is the music major student. And with, with that condition, they're asking us to find that when we pick a student from music major, what is the probability that the student would be female, correct? So again, the same thing, probability is like the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes. Now, what is the total outcome here? What is our boundary? Our boundary is the music major, all the students who are doing music major. So this is our music major, so 19 plus 17. So we're going to add these two, right? So 19 plus 17, which comes out to be 36. So 36 is our boundary. That's our total number of outcomes because we know that we are picking a student who is who's doing a music major. And what is the probability of the student being a female? 
How many females are there? 17. So 17 over 36 would be the probability of getting a female student when we are selecting a student from a pack of music majors. Again, just to reiterate, right, the concept of probability is simple. It is number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes. But we need to be very clear and we need to be sure that what is our boundary? From which set are we trying to find the probability? That's the main thing. Question four. The coin is tossed two times, okay? And we have to find the probability that either we get both heads or we get both tails, right? So let's find the probability that, what is the probability of getting both tails, right? So when we toss a coin, the probability of getting a tail is half, right? Because we want tail and the total number of outcomes could be two. So with the same definition of probability, the probability of getting a tail is one over two. Right. And then we are tossing the coin again, and again we want tail. So we multiply by half. Okay, which gives us one over four. So one over four is the probability of getting both tails, right? The probability of getting the first tail times the probability of getting the second tail. So one over two times one over two is equal to one over four, right? Why we multiply the individual probabilities? Because we are joining two conditions with and, right? So whenever we are joining two conditions with and, we are making our overall situation more strict, more stringent, and hence we multiply the individual probabilities because the final probability would be lesser than the individual probabilities, right? So whenever we are joining two conditions by and, we multiply the individual probabilities, okay? And we'll do more of this in our next questions. Same thing here, let's find the probability of getting both heads. So the probability of getting both heads, again, the probability of getting a head is half. And then again, getting the probability uh, of uh, second head is also half. So the probability of getting both heads, head and head is half times half, which is one over four. So one over four is the probability of getting both tails, right? One over four is the probability of getting both heads. And the question is saying that they are okay with either both heads or both tails. So they are okay with this also and this also. So they are joining each of these conditions by R. So we will do a plus here. So one over four plus one over four, which will give you two over four or half. Okay, so a couple of things happening here, right? When we are joining two conditions by and, right, we want a head and we want another head, right? We multiply the individual probability. So we found the probability of both tails. With the same logic, we found the probability of both heads. Now these two conditions are being joined by R. So whenever we are joining the conditions by R, in that case, we add the individual probabilities. So this probability plus this probability because we're joining by R. So we are okay either ways, right? We are okay with this also. We are okay with that also. So the overall probability or the overall ch chance will increase and hence you will add them. So one over four plus one over four equal to two over four or one by two. Next question. So we have a card uh, pack of 52 cards, right? Playing cards. And a card is drawn at random from that pack. And we have to find the probability that the card we pick randomly is neither a red card nor a queen. Okay. Now, obviously, you will need to know a little bit about the card packs, right? So overall, there are 52 uh, cards in a pack and there are two colors. So you have red color and black color. So you have red color and then you have black color. Okay. And there are 26 um, red cards and 26 black cards, right? So the total comes out to be 52, correct? There are four uh, flavors. Within the red, you have diamond, right? And you have heart. Okay, within the black, 
you again have two flavors one is the clubs and the other is the spade okay this is just some information which i'm giving to you because you will need to know these details whenever you have to deal with the questions related to the card packs but again anyways coming back to the question right so we have this pack of 52 cards and we are picking a card at random and we have to find the probability that it should not be a red and it should not be a queen okay so what is our overall boundary our overall boundary or the total number of outcomes is 52 because you know we are picking a card from the entire set so our denominator becomes 52 correct what is our number of favorable outcomes what is that we need we don't need a red card so we don't need any of these 26 right we want these 26 which are black right but out of these 26 black we also have to subtract the queens because there are two queens which are red and there are two queens which are black so these 26 black cards will also have two queens right so we have to subtract those two queens also because we don't need them also right the probability of neither a red nor a queen so essentially our number of favorable outcomes becomes 26 minus 2 so 26 minus 2 which is equal to 24 over 52. I mean, you can of course simplify this fraction, but 24 over 52 will be the probability of picking a red card, uh, uh, I mean, not getting a red card and not getting a queen. Again, just to reiterate, right? The definition remains the same, number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes. Our total outcomes are 52 because the pack is of 52 cards. Now, we don't want a red card, so all these 26 are ruled out. That is not in our favor. Our favorable outcomes are coming from the 26 black cards. But in those 26 black cards, there are two queens as well, which is also we don't want. So we remove those two also to get the final favorable outcomes, which is 26 minus 2, which is 24. And hence, our overall probability would be 24 over 52. Question number six. A coin is tossed three times, right? So we have a coin, we have a fair coin, and we're tossing it three times one by one and we have to find the probability that we will get at least one head okay we can get one head two heads or three heads all of those are our favorable outcomes but we want at least one head okay so whenever you have a situation like this where wherein you're talking about probability of something happening happening at least once right what do we do the best way is that we find the probability of the opposite scenario so let's say that we want to find the probability of getting no head at all, correct? All tails, first time tail, second time tail, and third time tail. Let's find the probability of the opposite scenario, right? So what is the probability of all tails? So probability of the first tail would be half, and second tail also is half, and third tail also is half, right? And we just saw previously that whenever we are joining the conditions by and, we are making our overall situation more stringent and stricter, and hence the overall final probability will obviously obviously be lesser than the individual probability, and hence we multiply the individual probabilities. So probability of all tails like the first tail and the second tail and the third tail would be 1 over 8, rightfully so, and this has to be much less than the individual probabilities because we are talking about all tails, right? It easy, it's easier to get one tail, but it's much harder to get all the three tails, which is rightfully reflected by the lesser value here, right? So the probability of all tails is 1 over 8, right? All other scenarios, right, will lead to at least one head, right? So the probability of at least one head would be at least one head would be the total probability and the total probability of anything happening is 1, 1 minus 1 over 8, which comes out to be 7 over 8. So whenever we are dealing with situations like at least, we find the probability of the opposite scenario, which is easier to find, and then we subtract that from the total probability because the total probability of anything happening is 1. So 1 minus the probability of all tails will give us the probability of getting at least one head. Because we are not concerned whether we get one head, two head, or three heads, but we just want at least one head. So anything except of this will qualify for at least one head. Uh, let's take a last question here. So we have a box which has some yellow balls and some brown balls, okay? 
and we are given that the probability of picking a yellow ball is x over 4 and the probability of picking a brown ball is 2 over 3 correct we don't know the number of these yellow and brown balls but these are the only two colored balls in the box and we know that the probability of picking a yellow ball is x over 4 and the probability of picking a brown ball is 2 over 3 and with that situation we have to find the value of x correct so we know that the total probability is 1 the total probability of anything happening is 1 and there are only two colored balls here so if the probability of picking a brown ball is 2 over 3 then it means that the probability of picking the yellow ball would be 1 minus 2 over 3 correct because there is no other ball there in the box which comes out to be 1 over 3 so the probability of yellow ball has to be 1 over 3 we are given that probability of yellow ball is x over 4 it means that x over 4 has to be equal to 1 over 3 so we say x over 4 is equal to 1 over 3 and I cross multiply we get 3x is equal to 4 and then we divide by 3 on both sides to get x is equal to 4 over 3 so that is our answer so pretty straightforward question the concept which we are using here essentially is that the total probability of anything happening is 1 right so the probability of happening this one thing is 2 over 3 then the probability of happening the other thing would be 1 minus 2 over 3 which will be 1 over 3 and that is given to be x over 4 hey folks hopefully you like the video and it gave you a good perspective in terms of what is a probability how do we find probabilities in different situations right so essentially we talked about a couple of things the definition of probability probability is nothing but the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes so we have to be very clear in terms of what is our boundary what is our total outcome set right we also saw that probability uh, the value of the probability will always lie between 0 and 1 it can never go below 0 right because there is no way of any chance happening less than 0 I mean the chance of an anything happening could be either 0 or maximum it can go to 1 so it will always be a decimal between 0 and 1 we also saw that when we are joining two conditions by and we multiply the individual probabilities because when we are joining the conditions by and we are making the whole situation more stringent and hence the final probability is obviously expected to be smaller since the probability is a number between 0 and 1 let's say 0.5 or 0.6 when we multiply with another decimal between 0 and 1 the final decimal would be smaller which is what we expect in case of and but when we are joining the two conditions by or we are actually expanding our horizon so the overall final probability will have to be bigger larger than the individual probabilities and hence in that condition we add the individual probabilities so uh, you know keep practicing in case you have any questions uh, please feel free to reach out to us at info.mathletes at gmail.com uh, do like and subscribe and see you in the next session